Welcome back to Freight Waves Now on this Thursday morning. Michael Vincent, we talk a lot about capacity, available yep. space, what's going on in that market. We don't talk a lot about the bulk tanker market, though. It's, not, it's, it's pretty niche, not something that we cover broadly here. Yeah, every once in a while we get into it, but today we're going to with mm -hmm. our old friend Patrick Mayer, who is, uh, what is his, now he's Chief Commercial Officer at Grammar, Grammar Logistics. Logistics. Uh, Patrick, what's going on, my friend? Good morning. I'm doing great. How are y'all doing? Thanks for having me back. Yeah, thanks for joining us. We're excited to hear about you and your new role at Grammar. Tell us a little bit about your transition. What's going on there? Yeah, so thanks for having me again, and um, always great to be on. So, yeah, I've been in the uh, truckload in the the international space, the the intermodal space. Been on the show a couple different times. Uh, even during the recent Texas storms, uh, you guys had me on um, down there during the the winter storms with the capacity issues. Uh, the freeze that the port, the, all the issues on the on the Gulf Coast. I recently had the opportunity to join the folks at Grammar Logistics, which is a leading uh, bulk tanker carrier. We've got uh, really 25 terminals throughout the country, mostly in the eastern half of the U.S. And a lot of growth in this space right now, which is really what attracted me uh, to the opportunity. One was the culture, fantastic culture, fantastic driver, first culture, safety culture at Grammar. And then also just the uh, the growth within the chemical space um, and just the bulk space, as you mentioned, it's really interesting. It's the it's the inputs that go into U.S. manufacturing, and uh, obviously that's on fire right now. And so um, we're just really excited to to play a part in that and um, and really just figure out ways to connect our customers to um, you know all our different service offerings and and capacity options throughout the country. So, uh, Patrick, yeah, last time we spoke, I think Texas was completely frozen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, so, so what's going on in, in, in this space right now? You mentioned that it's on fire. And, and you, a lot of it, when, when a lot of people think bulk uh, truckload carrier, they think of grains and stuff like mm -hmm. that, right? right? But, uh, or just gasoline, but not chemicals so much in the manufacturing side of it. And it's one of the raw materials going into it. Talk to us about that. What's going on in the industry right now? Yeah, look, it, it's uh, it, it's strained with capacity. Um, you know, as U.S. manufacturing comes back, uh, the the all the different uh, gases and all the different uh, liquid chemicals that we we handle, the specialty chemicals that we handle, uh, are in really high demand right now. And so, um, the best way I can describe it is it takes a very specialized driver and a very specialized, uh, obviously, tanker or trailer that's specific to that commodity. So uh, there's a lot of planning, there's a lot of prep work that goes into making that capacity available, which is much different than what you'll see in, in general commodity, irregular route freight, or even packaged goods. And so, look, it's, it's very specialized, but the way that I look at it is, uh, even from a driver standpoint, um, you know, if, if it's hazardous materials that are moving down the interstate, um, you would want to work with a company and you'd want to work with a, a professional driver um, you know, who's hauling that, right? You only want to work with the best of the best. And so um, that's how I look at our drivers. Um, they are, uh, they're engineers. I mean, they are, they're tradesmen and uh, they're highly trained, highly skilled at what they do. And I'm speaking largely, not just by grammar drivers, but bulk drivers in general. And, um, and I think there's a tremendous opportunity to bring more folks into the bulk industry uh, from a driver standpoint. Um, obviously, the pay uh, increases because of the the level of, uh, of skill that it takes to to do the work. Patrick, that was going to be my next follow up question: Is you guys obviously need to have these drivers that are specially attuned and really trained really well to handle this type of material? Does that kind of make it harder for you guys to source these people? Of course, we talk about the driver shortage in general all around. How it's hard to find people to fill those truck seats, just as it is. But is your labor pool even smaller, or because our, these folks are so specialized, they know exactly what they want, so they're more likely to pick you for employment? Well, I think it's a little bit of both, but I think to the the, the former there, um, the 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 pool is is definitely a lot smaller, and so that's going to challenge capacity um, even more within this space. You'll probably see it tighter in this space than you will in other spaces. Um, you're probably not going to see um, the drop off like you would in other spaces uh, because it is so specialized, and so um, you know. 
capacity is going to be capped and we're moving more into handling a lot more dedicated type business, more, um, you know, more longer term contracts, more rateable business, more consistent business. And obviously that's different than, uh, than just quoting a rate uh, on a one-off basis. And, uh, but look, that's good for the driver. So whatever it's going to take to give the driver that consistent level of income to then, uh, to then pay for that skill set is where the industry is moving. So it's going to move more towards uh, that dedicated piece and more rateable freight. Yeah, Patrick, uh, it, it seems a little bit uh, safer to me as uh, just driving down the road in, on four wheels that it's more contracted drivers mm -hmm. and one off. You know, who knows who this uh, carrier is pulling this stuff. But, uh, but Patrick, so I mean, chemicals move quite a bit internationally, obviously. Uh, port of Houston, where you used to be, big chemical type of port. Yeah, are, are, are the port issues and the maritime issues affecting the bulk as much as they are the containerized uh, uh, commodities? Are you being affected that? We really don't cover that that much, right? We talk about the number of containers sitting in Yenchin that can't be loaded. Is bulk getting hit that, hit that way as well? Not, not to the same extent. You know, the, the, the subcategory that you're talking about really where bulk and container business come together is the ISOs. Right, ISO tanks, and uh, and we handle some of those. Uh, we handle some of them domestically. Some of them go internationally. The ones that do move internationally uh, within that container space uh, definitely are going to be affected by the same challenges. Uh, most of those are moving export, so they're going to be affected just like other exporters are right now. And uh, I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, the 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 chemical. Um, you know, manufacturing was hit very hard in Texas and on the Gulf Coast after the storms. And that's largely come back now, um, but you've still got a backlog, right? And you've got plants that were shut down for a very long time. You've got a backlog and then that collides with the international piece and everything that's going on worldwide. And so um, obviously things are are much slower than than people would like. Now, a little plug for the the Port of Houston, who's done an amazing job with their infrastructure and really riding out these these volumes. Um, it's been covered a little bit, but the the chemical plants are back online, but the resin volume, that plastics volume, has not come back online um, internationally. Most of that is being sucked up by the domestic market because the domestic market, U.S. manufacturing again, is uh, is paying more for that. And so it doesn't make sense to ship a lot of that internationally. And so even with all the issues of international right now, um, you've got a lot of export resin that's not being shipped. And as that comes back online the second half of the year, as imports stay up, um, you know, could get a lot worse. Well, I never consider. I mean, so the U.S. is a is a large plastics exporter and that's not happening right now. Is that what you're selling? That's right. It's uh, absolutely all the, the packaging along the Gulf Coast and in the southeast is uh, is being made, is, is being built out and it has been being built out to export U.S. plastics because natural gas prices, which are the inputs, are lower. And um, and that's not happening right now, but it's only temporary. So as that comes back online, um, that it, that export volume will absolutely increase. That makes a lot of sense. I I honestly never even had any realization that the U.S. was such a big exporter of. No, I really didn't commodity. either. Patrick, give us a quick little synopsis. What are you seeing for the rest of the year? We're right at that halfway point of 2021. Are things tight and just going to continue to stay tight throughout the rest of the year? Yeah, that that's what we're seeing. Um, again, this is across a lot of different industries, going back from a, a you know a previous role and then even moving in the chemical space. Um, nothing that we're seeing right now says that. Um, much is going to change second half of the year and the, the commodities that we handle. If anything, we think it's going to uh, continue to get tighter. And then we'll see what, uh, you know, 2022 looks like. That's what you know. That's what everybody says. It's just the year of tightness continues. <laughs> yeah, it is. It and is. Patrick, you just dropped into that role over there at Grammar. Uh, if people want to connect with you, figure out a little bit more about moving these chemicals across the United States, where should they go to contact you? Absolutely. Best place is on LinkedIn. I'm fairly active on uh, LinkedIn. Connect with me. And then also Grammar's website is uh, www.grammarlogistics.com.
com, And of course, we've got uh, social media presence there too on LinkedIn and Facebook. We'd love to connect. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Always great to hear about what's going on upstream. We don't, like we said, we don't really talk about it that much. No, it's important. It's an interesting space and bulk is very interesting. So